It's been over seven years since a church group from another state brought a couple hundred refugees to the rural county where I live. I wanted to know, how could they do this? What was the governmental process that allowed the resettlement of refugees to a county ill-prepared to assimilate them? Employment opportunities were scarce. The health department was not familiar with illnesses and mental health problems of people who came from parts of the third world. The school system was not prepared to teach large numbers of students who didn't speak English, and subsidized housing was scarce. I wanted to know who gave permission for what amounted to a dropping off of needy people in our county seat. So I began my research and posted everything I learned to a blog, Refugee Resettlement Watch, so that others might know what I learned about a federal program that is 35 years old this year. In summary, I discovered that the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees was choosing most of our refugees. It's under the influence of a powerful Muslim supremacist group called the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Not surprisingly, a large number of U.S.-bound refugees are coming from countries with large numbers of people who hate us, including Somalia, Afghanistan, Iraq, and soon from Syria, just to name a few. The U.S. State Department then distributes the refugees to nine major federal contractors, six of which are so-called religious charities, but all are largely funded from the U.S. Treasury. They're not placing the plate on Sundays for the $1 billion price tag for the resettlement. And that figure does not include the extensive welfare benefits refugees receive. The refugees are then sent to over 190 cities and towns in the U.S. where the nine major contractors support 350 subcontractors. The refugees receive help from the subcontractor for up to six months, and the subcontractor then submits paperwork to admit the relatives of the first group. As the years have passed, I've become increasingly alarmed by the percentage of problematic Muslim refugees admitted and distributed around the U.S. through this program. By the way, the Refugee Resettlement Program is not the only one used for legally admitting Muslims, but it is one of the most important. Many are forming cities within cities. Perhaps you know one where you live, where mosques are being built to consolidate, train, and promote a growing American Muslim population and its Islamic supremacist doctrine called Sharia. This process of Muslim colonization is called the Hijra. Mohammed told his followers to migrate and spread Islam in order to dominate all the lands of the world. He said they were obliged to do so, and that's exactly what they were doing now, with the help and support of the UN, the US State Department, and the Christian and Jewish groups assigned to seed them throughout the country. Your tax dollars pay for it all. I've written this little book, Refugee Resettlement and the Hijra to America, so that you will know what is happening to us and what we can do about it. We only need to look to a troubled Europe to see the path ahead for America if we can't stop this migration and stop it soon. There's no reason on earth that we should have brought over 100,000 Somalis and another 100,000 Iraqi Muslims to America. Soon we will be resettling Syrian Muslims in large numbers. The UN at the moment has over 10,000 in a pipeline destined for our towns. The FBI told Congress recently that they cannot be properly screened. If you don't help counter the Hijra, we are, in my opinion, doomed. Over time, this migration will be more devastating to your children and grandchildren and to our country than any terrorist attack could ever be. Learn more at Refugee Resettlement Watch and securefreedom.org.